The, the Mayo is the first wearable gesture controller, and um, most gesture control devices would use cameras to detect your hand motions and gestures. Mayo works differently. Uh, Mayo uses your muscle activity, and so it's actually detecting these tiny electrical signals from the muscles in your forearm um, to figure out what hand gestures or motions you're making, processes that, and then sends the commands over Bluetooth to a connected uh, device, computer, or phone. So some of the, the simple applications out of the box, sort of for anyone to understand, would be as simple as in this boardroom here, controlling a PowerPoint or keynote presentation. As I'm walking through, you know, wave my hand to change the slides or annotate what I'm seeing on the screen. Um, other applications for consumers out of the box would be gaming, um, home media control, so controlling your video, music, etc. when you're walking through the house or sitting on the couch, kind of these big screen experiences. Um, it's not intended to replace your mouse and keyboard. So if I'm sitting at my desk and doing something, the Milo is not, you know, the next mouse you're going to use. It's more for I'm out in a larger environment. I'm walking around, I'm in a big room, out on the go, you know, controlling music while I'm running. Those types of scenarios are what's really exciting to us. Um, and then developers are building kind of additional applications on top of that. So it might be specific games that use Mayo they're building, anything from that to home automation control to music production. So we have DJs building applications for other DJs to control and produce music, for example. Um, and so that whole developer ecosystem is enabled through Mayo Market, which is our, our app world, essentially. Um, that once you have the device, and let's say you, know, you bought it for business presentations to start, once you get it, the same device works with all kinds of other applications. Mayo is a wearable device, um, but it's not a fitness tracker. It's not a smartwatch, and so it's really a different category of wearable from everything else that we think of today um, as wearables. So it's really the only wearable gesture controller, wearable input device. Other wearables are generally passive, so they're like their sensors tracking your footsteps or your fitness, uh, or their smartwatches. And those are sort of the two big categories that consumers think of today. So yes, you do wear it on your arm, so it's similar in that sense, but kind of that's where the similarities end.